this is our second session together. It was great to sing This Is My Father's World. I believe it was actually written in the part of the country that I live in, uh, near Ithaca, New York, where we're celebrating God's power in snow right now. <laughs> and I guess you guys are getting to celebrate God's power in sun, uh, which is very exciting. So this second session is called How Many Ways Can You Be a Christian Scholar? Connecting Faith in Your Field. So yesterday we looked at that really big picture and I hope that was encouraging. It's exciting to think that God made us to be creative and made us in the image of his creativity and that our work reflects that. Uh, and in the Google Doc where you shared some of your reflections from the small group, I saw some really amazing ways that you all are celebrating that in your work. And that was very exciting. And I also saw some really good questions about what if I just don't see a connection between my work and my faith, or is this easier in some field areas than others? We probably won't be able to answer all of those today, but we're gonna make a start on thinking through some of the ways this plays out in different field areas and some of the different models for it. Uh, so my colleagues have told me that many of you enjoy hiking and outdoor activities, and I really do too. And I think continuing to imagine our connection between our work and our beliefs uh, with metaphors of hiking is actually a really useful metaphor for us to use. So let's do a little bit of that. So like, you, like me, you might often go out on a really easy trail. Maybe it's paved and very close to your house. Uh, or maybe you decide to do something a little bit more substantial, maybe a five mile hike. Or maybe you've got really big aspirations and you want to hike the Pacific Crest Trail or the Appalachian Trail, one of these very long, famous trails that take a lot of work to build up to. Uh, or maybe you even have aspirations to do backcountry hiking where you're kind of blazing your own trail. So I think the complicated thing about connecting your work and your faith is that in a lot of ways, it's more like those last two examples, like hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, or even blazing your own trail somewhere uh, without many guideposts or signs. Uh, and that's exhilarating, right? Because in a way, it's you as a unique human being made in God's image, finding the thing that only you can show us and only you can reflect. Uh, but that's also a bit big and scary, right? That sounds kind of overwhelming, though exhilarating. But the good news is we do have some really encouraging models from other Christian scholars. And the other good news, as with physical exercise, is that you don't have to start with the Pacific Crest Trail, right? You're still getting some really amazing benefits of exercise if you're just taking a 15 minute walk near your house. And that's kind of true in connecting faith and work too, that if you do the easy thing that's, that you can actually get started on, you're still going to get some amazing benefits. Uh, and if you're a person who doesn't identify as a follower of Christ, we would welcome you to think about how some of these ideas might connect to your own values and how you connect to your values and your work, and we'd be happy to learn with you today. So here are a couple of models. Now, these are not meant to be exhaustive, uh, and many of them kind of interact with each other in some people's experience, uh, and they're you know, they're not hard and fast categories that are meant to limit you. They're categories that are meant to start our conversation and start our discovery together. So I hope this is empowering, not limiting. Uh, and some of you may even add new models to this list, so no pressure. So I think these are helpful general categories as we imagine our own paths. So one I would say is faith and intellect. And this is kind of about connecting ideas from your field with your faith. There's a long, rich Christian intellectual tradition, and there might be some really interesting overlaps between ideas in your academic work and the Christian tradition. A second model is spiritual formation. And that's kind of growing the virtues and the practices that help you excel and work for others in both your field and your faith. And then a third model is loving your neighbor, and that's caring for others through your academic work and life. Now, often these things intertwine, 
uh, but it's helpful to think about them in these broad categories. So let's dive in to just a few examples of each of these areas. So with faith and intellect, we're often connecting ideas. Uh, an example is a physicist applying the theology of creation to their work studying aspects of the cosmos. And we saw a little bit of that in yesterday's reading by W. Brian Lane about glory seeking ministry in the academic life. Uh, and two examples that some of you will discuss in small groups today from Scholars Compass are David Vosberg. So Dr. Vosberg lives fairly near you. He is a chemistry faculty member at Harvey Mudd. And he explores further some ideas about creativity in the Christian tradition and how that plays out for him in his very specific work in the lab. Uh, now, these are all brief, of course, because that's one of the goals is short starting points, but he's a good example. And then I think you'll also see this if you choose the engineering breakout in the piece by Derek Chan, Words of Authority, where Derek kind of looks at some ideas and paradigms about how he sees the authority of scripture in his life uh, and connects that to some ideas and paradigms from his work in construction engineering as a graduate student. So those are a couple of examples. There are, are a lot more. And in some ways, that's what we've been already talking about as we talk about the theology of creation. Uh, but there are a lot of other ways to think about this too. Another way is spiritual formation. Maybe you aren't seeing any big intellectual connections between your particular field area and your faith, and that's fine. You might in time, uh, but maybe this will be more of your model for connecting faith and work, at least for a while in your life, or maybe long term. So this is kind of about developing virtues and practices that help you grow both in your field and your spiritual life. Uh, so an example for me is that I love my field of literature, uh, but I went through a pretty long period of disenchantment with writing a dissertation, as many of us do at some point. Uh, and figuring out how to stick with it really grew the virtue of faithfulness in my own life. And I grew in my ability to commit to big things and see them through through the process of writing my dissertation. Uh, and two quick examples from Scholar's Compass. Uh, one is by Bethany Hebbard, uh, though I think it'll say Bethany Bear on the website because she's changed her name between then. Uh, on learning scholarly virtues from the Iliad, where she talks about her work teaching this classic of Greek literature, really helped her develop some virtues that are very important as a teacher and as a scholar. So if you choose the humanities session, uh, you'll be reading that one. Uh, another example is by Jean Nathan Matias, a professor here at Cornell near where I live. And he wrote this when he was a graduate student at MIT. And we won't be reading this one today, but you can look at it in your booklet later. So he reflected on the famous scientist, James Clerk Maxwell, who made a really big mistake that turned out to inspire lots of important things in the develop of color development of color photography technologically. And so Nathan draws from that the idea of humility in our research and faith and recognizing that sometimes God uses our mistakes as much as the things that we got right. So those are two brief examples of spiritual formation in your academic work that we can think about. And then there's this third category of loving our neighbors through our academic work. And this is also a category that's really open to all of us, even if we can't figure out an intellectual connection between work and faith at a particular moment, or even a spiritual disciplines connection. Uh, and this can take lots of forms. It could be loving your colleagues. It could be caring for your students. It could be caring well for other members of the campus community, such as administrators and custodial staff. Uh, and it could also have an aspect of the work that you choose where we can love our neighbors beyond the academy uh, through the work that we do, perhaps through applications of work that promote justice or human flourishing. Uh, one good example would be the work of Judy Dean. So she's an economics professor and has a flourishing career. And she also advises 
drawing on her professional expertise, she advises a refugee support organization called World Relief. And then there's also a category of being able to love our neighbors and support them just by doing what we're doing well. So I noticed in the Google Docs, someone mentioned debugging as a really good example of something that's hard to connect with academic paradigms about your faith. Uh, you know, most people don't sit down to debug and think, wow, I'm experiencing the wonder of creation here. Uh, and I think that's a very good point. That's true. Uh, but debugging actually can be a very practical way of loving your neighbor. When you sit down and debug your code successfully and faithfully, you're probably improving a number of lives and maybe the lives of people that you won't even meet in person. So some of the most mundane tasks of the academic life actually are a way to love our neighbor if we think about them in that mode. Uh, and so a couple of Scholars Compass examples, again, the one about learning scholarly virtues from the Iliad, kind of imagines the importance of caring for your students well. And we won't read this one today, but again, you can look at your booklet, Anna Mosley Gissing, reflects on grading as a spiritual practice, uh, which is something a lot of us have wondered if there's a way to do. And so she thinks about it as a personal spiritual practice, but also as a way of caring well for students. So those are a couple of examples that we can look to as we imagine what these things look like in our lives. And so I think that leads us to thinking about taking the next step wherever you are. You may already be thinking in all these categories. They may be really new to you. You may be kind of in between where maybe you've got some ideas about one or two of them. And what we'd like to do is break into small groups by field area. And wherever you're at on this process, we hope that those small groups are going to help you just take the next step along that path. So. Today, uh, unlike last night, where we all had one thing to read, today we have different breakout group options, and I'll walk you through them. And I believe Tim is going to put a link to the Google Doc to take notes in the chat, and also to the retreat guide that lists the, the questions and where to find the one you're reading. So uh, if you're interested in talking about the humanities, uh, you'll be in the group discussing learning scholarly virtues from the Iliad, and you can find that one. If you're in the natural sciences, uh, you'll be looking at creativity that delights. If you're in the social sciences, you'll be looking at integrating faith and archaeology. And if you're interested in talking about engineering, you'll be looking at words of authority. And the idea here is, obviously, uh, we can't cover every single specific field area in this short breakout, but the hope is that within these big categories of humanities, natural sciences, social sciences, and engineering, we can give you one specific example of how a scholar is integrating these things. And hopefully that can be a model that is a springboard or encouragement or a model that gives you ideas for how you're going to do it. And you might find that your way of thinking about it is very similar to the writers, or you might find that it kind of encourages you to go off in a different direction in your own, reflecting on your own work. So we're going to break into small groups now, and you should be able to join those. And I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. And I believe we also have a Google Doc. So as you did yesterday, uh, please introduce yourselves, choose one note taker who's going to put some notes in uh, the Google Doc about what you're learning, and then discuss it, your topics, and we'll come back and do a short Q&A in about 45 minutes. <laughs> 